Okay, this video is going to cover how to get data from the unit or off of the computer. Um, one way to do it is to open up Data Capture, set up temperature guard, servers, and sensors, select your unit, right click, edit server. This download all log records button will download the log records off of the unit, not from the computer. I have my update rate set at 10, which after 10 days, I should get 10 days worth of data. It comes by default set to 5 minutes, so if you need more than 5 days worth of data on the unit, I suggest you change it. You can do the same thing here through a web browser. All you need is the IP address, and I'll show you that in a minute. The onboard log records will come in handy if you ever have a power outage more than a day. Um, the network card is not powered by the batteries, so the computer will stop collecting the data. There will be a gap, but when the power is restored, you can download the log records off of the unit to make sure that the temperature stayed within range. So here we have, I have two sensors hooked up. You can simply view the records here and then you can export them to a CSV file. I generally choose my desktop. And you can put the date. Give it some descriptive name. Okay, close. And it should be here now. Now you should be able to do the date time column. You just need to open it up to see it. As you can see, I had an update rate of five minutes before, but near the end, it should be 10 minutes. You can see it's every 10 minutes here. All the data is here, and if you're good with Excel, you can graph it as you wish. These last two, three columns are door sensor one, door sensor two, which is in this case not hooked up, and whether the power is on or off. And that's how you do that. Save changes. No. It can be done the same way through a web browser except you can also graph it. Java must be loaded on the computer for our internal web page to show up. This is a good way to get it if you don't have access to the data capture software. Okay, once it's finished updating, you see the date and the time, you can download the internal log right here. And you should see it start going across here at the bottom. The 505E only has room for 1,424 records. 
Once that is filled, the oldest will be overwritten. So now you can show the log once it's downloaded. You can export it to a CSV the same way we just did. But the nice thing here is you could graph them. So now you can see the temperature. If you see this nice little dip here, last weekend, while away on vacation, uh, my furnace did die. It never did call me because I had the lower limit set to 50 at the time. Which was good because then I didn't have to worry. It never got below 50 degrees. But that's what that dip was. It turned out I had a clogged uh, fuel line coming from the oil tank. But I was able to get someone to come out and fix it. No damage done. This red line is the actual outdoor temperature. Go back, you can export it to CSV the same way we did it before. I generally choose the desktop. Save it. Okay. And there it is. It's pretty much the same thing I just did. Date time is here. Sensor 1 through 8. Door 1, door 2. And then the last way to get data is what the computer collected. That is a separate program called Data Capture Graphing. I've run it, but it is in the Temperature Guard folder. So, if you click this drop down box, you will see all the sensors. Now, I cleared this out yesterday, so it would be rather neat. There's only two sensors plus the door sensor, so really there's three. But each sensor is going to get a new log file every month. Yesterday was the 31st. So as you can see here, all data from 331 to 331, which is, I cleared it out yesterday. This would be just today's data. Over time, this data file will say 41 to 430. 30 or 31, however many days are in April. So let's say I choose, I'm going to choose this one. You, you really want the all datas, not the averaged readings. I'm going to do outdoor 4, 1 to 4. I can only graph today. Actually, I could probably go back to yesterday, March 31st. You can either create a chart or you can output the data to a CSV file. I'm going to click the chart one first. Error encountered. Here is bad record number. Okay. Okay, I think it's only going to let me do from this amount of data right here. Okay, there it is. This is the actual outdoor temperature. You can actually export it to a CSV file as well. And the same way, the default location is the data capture folder in temperature guard. If you don't want it there, put it wherever you want it. I generally store it. And it gives a descriptive file name, outdoor temperature, which is the name of the sensor, and then the date range. Now it's 42011 to 42011. You can put the actual dates in there if you chose something different on the chart. If you have a full month's worth of data, you can pick any time period in between. But I only have one day's worth of data since I cleared it out yesterday. Okay, and then that will be here. You can only do one sensor at a time in data capture graphing. And this is the actual numbers. Um, 
Maybe I'll do a different one later on when this thing is actually full of data at the end of the month. And then you will see that you can do a whole lot. You can graph an entire month's worth at once. Um, but that's about it.